Namaskar. Welcome to another edition of What the Fatah uh, with some good news. If uh, you have been watching what's happening in Saudi Arabia, a very pleasant sight uh, to be seen was the presence of female police, police officers inside the Kaaba. Of course, uh, most non-Muslims would not know, or even perhaps most Muslims don't know, that within the sanctum of the Holy Kaaba in Mecca, women are not allowed to cover their faces. And men and women do the Hajj together. There is no separation. There is no, uh, you know, police that tells you to stay apart. It's uh, uh, remarkable how um, in, in a way gender equality was exercised. I've done the Hajj twice, once in 78, then again in 1982 with my mom and my wife and my daughter. So I know what it is to do a uh, Hajj if you have females with you. But the sight of Saudi police officers replacing male officers inside the Kaaba tells you a lot of what is happening in that part of the world. When Crown Prince MBS Mohammed bin Salman says that he wants to turn Arabia into Europe uh, within a few years, I think what she's talking about is not uh, that Club Monaco will start over there or that uh, ritzy film festivals will be held there. I think what he's talking about is the thought ingrained, by the way, in Islamic uh, traditions uh, at the time of, the, of, of Prophet Muhammad, that men and women are equal. Most mullahs don't agree with me, and most non-Muslims who are hostile to Islam will say, ah, Tariq Fatah is just doing propaganda. No, not really. It was a woman, a widow, who proposed marriage to Prophet Muhammad. 15 years younger than her. Today, that is an impossibility. You cannot imagine someone in India, a 45-year-old woman, going to a 25-year-old young man saying, ah, I, I, I love you and I'd like to marry you. This is impossible. Yet, we proclaim that we are the followers of Prophet Muhammad. No, we are not. <laughs> we, we've, we've made the whole religion into how it suited the enemies of Prophet Muhammad when he, when the Umayyads ruled uh, uh, from Damascus and invaded India, those were the times. Uh, this is not true. But MBS, as he is called, is turning the tide. Friends who have gone back to Saudi Arabia or made a stopover in Jeddah just to see old friends come back and say, you can't believe it. There are immigration officers who are women. You see women driving cars in, in, in Jeddah. And that is a stark contrast from the days when I lived there, where a woman could not appear in public without having being fully covered. Of course, it's a different story. My wife never did. And when they enforced that, we left the country. Uh, she was a school teacher there. But uh, uh, he's changing things. And this will have a very positive effect everywhere. Imagine the most radical guy from Deoband going there and finding with female police officers during Hajj around him. What's he going to come back to in, in, in India and say, Are sahab, taba ho gaya. Arab, Arabia to taba ho gaya sahab. Ab to kuch karna padega Hindustan mein. That's the thought pattern of the people who lead Islam in India, especially the madrasa mullahs the, uh, talking about. However, that good news, leave that aside, right across the Persian Gulf, what do you have? The Islamic Republic of Iran. And just not that Iran is out to carry out and be a base for terrorists and extremism and spread it around the world from, uh, you know, Argentina right down to uh, wherever uh, in Lebanon and in uh, sponsoring Hamas in the occupied territories, Iran has a foot 
everywhere. In Iraq's problems, Iran is right there. In, in Pakistan, well, Pakistan is far worse than Iran, so Iran cannot make it you know, in progression over there. But Iran now has teamed up with guess who? China. So China now has a 25-year oh, a 25-year treaty under which China will cooperate and educate Iranian defense uh, forces into how to manipulate and accomplish or implement new technologies. So you had this drone that attacked uh, uh, an oil tanker. Iran denies it, says, well, you know, things appear. If Allah wants them to appear, they appear. And we had nothing to do with it. Then the other day, we find that six oil tankers lose their ability to operate on the seas as a result of cyber warfare, which means that the Iranians had, have now the capability of disabling ships on the high seas. And what are the chances that China, under the treaty, under the treaty signed by between Iran and China, has provided that cyber warfare capability to the Islamic Republic of Iran? The cooperation between a country that's led by communists, who's in entire theory and basis is that there is no God, has an alliance with two countries, Pakistan and Iran, whose existence wouldn't be there if they adopted the Chinese communist philosophy. Yet, the devil is in the details. Iran and Pakistan, especially Iran, does not really care what China does to Muslims. Because they were Uyghurs, so about a million are in concentration camps. We are Persians. We are, you know, cream of the crop Muslims. So China is using Iran to attack and undermine shipping in the Gulf of Oman and the Persian Gulf, where the oil is coming from other Muslim countries, whether it is the UAE or whether it is uh, Qatar or Saudi Arabia, they all have the shipping terminals in the Persian Gulf and on them sits Iran and the Persian Gulf, the Gulf of Oman. And guess where the Gulf of Oman starts? Is Gawadar, another Indian folly that will always remain in history but hidden from Indians, is that port that was offered to India but India said, no, 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 it's too far away. Today it's a Chinese naval base at the mouth of the Gulf of Oman overlooking all shipping going in and out of the Persian Gulf. And now Iran and China are gotten together. You think they are doing research on the pandemic? Of course not. The Chinese made the um, uh, virus. As far as the Iranians or Pakistanis are concerned, a lucky marziya. People die because God wishes them to, wishes death for them, and so they pass away. It's a one way ticket. They won't come back. So who cares? That's going on right under the nose of India. Well, it's not really under the nose of India, but just on the sidelines. The Chinese have such influence in Sri Lanka, in Maldives. They have, uh, 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 you know, operating bases in. Burma, and even Bangladesh. India is a victim of Chinese expansionism. What the East India Company did in the 1800s, China is doing it with its own military. Of course, the East India Company had its own military. But there is nothing being done to contain the influence of the Chinese imperialists or aggressors to, who are trying to undermine the only challenge there is to China, which is Bharat or Hindustan or India, no matter how what you call it. Mr. Nehru's Hindi Chini Bhai Bhai is vanished in the wind 
in 1962. Up to Pirbi, Prime Minister Modi is there and he can take care of certain things. But this is a new danger. India built the Chabahar port. And now this will be used by the Chinese. Just imagine. Ye aman parasti, ye shanti, ye sab baate reh jayengi. Phir niklega ek babar. Aur aayega aapke paas. And this time he will have Chinese backing. Whether this occurs in Pakistan, Afghanistan or Iran. It's a threat to those sort of people like Prince Mohammed bin Salman who are trying to get from the 12th century to the 21st. This is a great development. And I'm so glad that in, in, in Saudi Arabia now, they're teaching the Ramayana and Mahabharat in their uh, schools for their students to understand that India is a great civilization. It's a great success. But never underestimate the crookedness of the Pakistan ISI and its allies in China, where a PIA aircraft flew a Taliban leader to Beijing so he could get a, get photographed with the Chinese Communist leadership and say, don't worry, we have nothing against you. Well, who are they against? When this explodes between Afghanistan, where the Taliban slaughter Shias, and Iran, which is the only Shia ruled country in the world, can you imagine what the outcome will be? It will be what's happening in Yemen, where they are still fighting to decide what is the right Islam to be implemented. It happened in Syria. Five lakh people died. Now, some lakh Yemen died. And that's, that's absolutely... I, I would like to visit certain Indian universities for people to, young people to understand the threat they face. But of course, they are too busy preparing for the GMAT exam so that they can go from an MBA here to United States and then become rich and fair and lovely. But that won't help your civilization. It didn't a thousand years ago and it won't today. Watch out for Iran because Iran itself is the source of great pain to Muslims around it, whether they live in Iraq, whether they live in Balochistan, which, by the way, is partly occupied by Iran, or Oman, or the United Arab Emirates. All of them are worried about the China-Iran axis with Pakistan playing the dirty role of providing manpower to carry out the agenda of Chinese imperialism. आज के लिए इतना ही अगली दफा के लिए इजाजत दीजिए नमस्कार थैंक यू फॉर बीइंग गिविंग मी सम ऑफ योर टाइम खुदा हाफिज़